All right, welcome back to another week of tier list videos where I go over the most recent videos where Sunday is the cutoff, or should I say Monday, I guess, and we rate them based on how much I personally enjoyed it. First up, let's talk about the parry anime, bro. And the parry anime, um, so it's interesting because the parry anime, it's all over the place. It's like, Sometimes I'm really pissed off because of how stupid the characters are, but that's the whole point. And sometimes that stupidity does pay off, but then there's also really, like, serious moments that shows up out of nowhere. For the most recent episode, I think that, like, the whole explanations of how I got the poison immunity, it's very dumb, but it makes a lot of sense, according to our character, Nor. And also the backstory of the demon kid, I felt like it was pretty decent. It was an enjoyable episode. I don't think it's really great tier, though. I think that it was just... Good, and I think it should be fine here. Next up, failure frame. Failure frame? It got me again. Every time I'm like so immersed into the story and listening to what the main character is doing, I'm just following his steps, but I forget that he's a fucking maniac. Like, bro, his performance could put him at great. Now, the villains, again, I think that every villain just being a rapey, weird, creepy guy is so fucking lazy writing, right? If the only way that you can write your villains to elicit such an emotional reaction from the audience is to have everyone just be a creep, you are just a fucking failure of a writer. And then people will then go on and make an excuse. They'll say, well, Kaka TV, no, there's actually a good reason why every villain is a shitty person. Listen, take a step back and think about why that reason even exists. The author created an excuse for every villain to be creepy. That does not mean that he's not going about this in a good way. That's still fucking lazy writing, dude. I don't care if a valid reason exists and why they're creepy. Think about why that reason exists. Who created it? And then you'll realize, huh, maybe this is bullshit. But regardless, even if the villains are trash, the way that the main character handles those trash is very entertaining. And the goddess <laughs> foot-looking scene... <laughs> Dude, God is vicious, man. What the fuck is a fan service? Next up, Elusive Samurai has been dropped. I would say that I'm sorry, but I'm not because you guys don't give a fuck about the show and why am I continuing to make videos on a topic that no one cares about? It's just an unproductive time for everybody. Same with Days of My Stepsister. It doesn't mean that's a bad show. It's just that means that my audience just doesn't give a fuck about it. It is what it is and here's another show that got dropped nobody remembers me yep nobody's remembering this show either when it got dropped it's kind of crazy how the production value of the show is pretty good the plot seemed interesting enough the designs were fantastic the soundtrack was great the voice acting wasn't lackluster i don't give a fuck about this show re-zero immediately hooked me into the show the world building i cared about that shit immediately from the get-go nobody remembered me i don't give a fuck that's why the Vanessa fight, it was just all fan service. But the weight of the episodes meant, felt like nothing because I just didn't give a fuck about the world. Which is, I guess, maybe a me thing, but also my audience just doesn't really give a fuck about the show either. So it is what it is. Let's talk about Oshinoko. Peak. Oshinoko, bro. The Melt Redemption story. It executed. It was so good. The visuals were stunning. I was immediately hooked by the theater atmosphere that they're trying to portray. Even though I'm watching an anime, it feels like I'm in theaters. The fight scenes are better than fucking actual fight. Oh, Snoko has better fight animation than these two. What the fuck? Like, do you understand how stupid that is? Do you understand that Dogako will make his slice of life and like fucking psychological like drama and shit? Like, there isn't supposed to be any fights. And then the fight scenes in the fucking theater play are better than the actual fucking fight anime. That's embarrassing, but hey, that's a fucking studio diff, man. The melt visuals and how he was getting redeemed as he realizes that like he is the pathetic character that he's portraying in the manga. A loser that's trying to get a redemption arc. And the whole realization and then the visuals. It was just no dialogue, just amazing visuals, bro. That shit was actually so goaded. I it so enjoyed that scene. And other people seeing, you know, that like, whoa, this like shitty actor, hold the fuck on. This guy's amazing, right? And like, think about it. That choreographed, the choreographed flip that he did, the one that he called ad lib, when he says it means ad lib and he apologized, it means that he never practiced that during draft rehearsals, meaning he kept that move a fucking secret. 
then he took a huge gamble to risk it during an actual live play and then executed it. Just realize how much Melt put on the line and how much he got out of it. Such a good episode. Next episode. Next series. Uh, Let's talk about Nokutan. I thought that Nokutan was over the, the most recent episode, right? The most recent episode was... The 18 skits into... You know what? If I can't even remember it, then it doesn't really deserve that, right? I mean, it was a fun episode, right? And there was more... And there was like the fucking deer molting skins and weird shit going on. It, it is pretty bizarre, but... I like the last week's episode better. This most recent episode was not bad. I'll put it on good. Next up, we got Tower of God. Urek Mazino is here. I'll put it on great. I'll put it above Failure Frame. In fact, Failure Frame prop should probably be down here. Probably something like that. I'll put this shit here. I think Tower of God was fantastic. It wasn't as super exciting as the previous episodes because as we're because like we're just getting into like a new arc and trying to figure out what we're doing. Basically, new test, new set of rules. We got introduced to new characters as well from Fug, right? The sensei of not Sung Chun Mu, uh, fucking bomb, right? I think his name was Jin Sung, right? Fug members, and he was so nice, but it's just like, listen, if you guys were not that strong, he would have killed you all. When Hwaryeon said that, I was like, oh my fucking god. Also, what is going on with Hwaryeon, man? Hwaryeon? has been introduced as this mysterious, cool, silent girl. But in season two, she's just a meme lord. I feel like... I'm not sure where these characterizations from Hotline is showing up from. It's been many years since season one content in terms of actually like the timing of time skip. But like Hwadian has so much personality now and I'm all for it. She's just like eating the fucking apple nonchalantly as she explained to Wang, uh, Wang, Wang Nan that like, listen, Jin Sung would have killed you. Like she doesn't give a fuck. I love her. She's so funny. Next up. I think that Osan Newbie Adventure was on hiatus last week, right? So we can't really place this on the list. I know that like this is coming out this week and obviously this most recent Monday we had the episode, but it still doesn't count for this tier list because it was on hiatus. Let's talk about Wistoria. The Wistoria episode was pretty decent, yeah. The battle is happening. Tournament arc is happening. It's battle royale, right? Just teams of threes um, scattered across the maps and we're going into the center. There's some extra lore being mentioned about the Earth Princess that I think Colette could be because she seems to be one of the few Earth users that we know, right? And maybe it is or it isn't. Now, I thought that Shion is going to have a redemption arc. But motherfucker just like backstabbed us and is now trying to fight against Will for a personal grudge from the events that happened in episode one. And Colette is stuck outside by Julius. We do see Julius using his ice magic and hear Colette shrieking. But like... Do you think that maybe Julius will be beaten by Colette? If Colette truly is the Earth Princess, what if that opportunity arises? Like right now, we think that this is getting bad, but what if Colette is the one that beats Julius? That would be some mind-blowing shit. I would be so down for that. And if that is the case, then I guess we gotta thank Xion for doing that. I thought that Xion would be the one to counter Julius due to his natural advantage of fire melting ice, but... We'll see what he's trying to do, man. I'm still not completely convinced that he is an evil character. He's obviously got a lot of banter and a lot of, you know, vengeance seeking through Will, but... We gotta let him cook. Let's give him one more episode before we really give him the judgment. Next episode. Isekai Shikaku. The most recent episode was great, but the last episode, uh, it was... I think overall just good. Because, like, what happened, right? Basically, we got scammed. It was the episode where we got scammed by the kid. We entered a new village and... Yeah, Sensei, we, there was a whole revelation of how the more excited he gets, the more his HP increases. There was also the revelation of uh, who these fallen angels are, like the Isekai characters, the other worlders, the other popes and priests. I don't think it was supposed to be an amazing episode. I think that it's just to be, so, so, supposed to be like a little bit of an intermission, show and go around like what's going on around the world, where we're headed. Doesn't mean it's a bad episode. Doesn't mean that it's a peak episode. It was just good. It was good overall. Sensei shooting heart? Yeah, for sure. But I don't think that one single scene is going to make me say like it's on the term, like on like fucking here or like here. 
Maybe it could be here, but I'm more comfortable putting it here for now. I am throwing too many enemies into these tiers. Great and peak needs to be reserved for truly peak and great. I can't just throw everything up there or else it just doesn't make sense. It was a good episode. Doesn't mean that it was the best episode. Next up. Too many losing heroines. It was the episode with Lemon special ending. And Nuku potentially being in a fucking harm. Hmm. I think that it should be like here or here. I can't tell. Anna was very funny. I still hate the bitch. But I can definitely acknowledge that she makes it a lot more interesting whenever she's on screen time. And we're kind of getting set up, right? Because we're like, hold up. People are cheating. Hold up. Why is Lemon with the white hair senpai? Do they have something going on right now? Right? And then uh, the forehead shininess was the uh, the other girl who is actually, you know, uh, the girlfriend that's supposed to be dating the guy that Lemon likes. And we went through a whole different set of missions with her. And then eventually the misunderstandings got us to be locked up in a fucking closet together. And he showed up at the end. I think the next episode's gonna be fucking amazing. I, I, I'm comfortable putting this like here or here. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Komari is top eight. Komari is top eight. Let me put this here for now. Let me let me put the NTR shirt. The NTR shirt was crazy. The the NTR shirt was crazy. I'm gonna put this here for now. I'm gonna put this here for now. Next, Roche today. The most recent episode of Roche today. Can it compete in peak? Ayano showed up. But you cannot say peak. She fucking opened the door and she showed up. That's not enough to sway the entire episode. The entire episode. What was it? Well, we're trying to figure out. It was a... Uh... What was the first half of the episode? Do you guys even remember what happened at the fucking e in the beginning, guys? Because you guys are just screaming for Ayano right now. Ayano literally had three seconds of screen time. There was Yuki, right? Yuki confronted Alia. Yuki confronted Alia and was like asking like, do you love him? I love him so much that there was all of that stuff going on and Alia getting a little bit, you know, flustered. Then there was like a little bit of cute tea, 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 tea scenes where it's just like, oh, you know, eating tea with jam and stuff like that. School politics got announced. I am comfortable putting this on great i don't think that the last episode is as good as oshinoko yes i'm gonna go with that genuinely and if you tell me like it sucks that like a bad performing video of roche today is still gonna have like two times the numbers on a youtube reaction video compared to like a great ep like an amazing episode of oshinoko but it doesn't mean that but just because the numbers are high doesn't mean that it's just objectively better right there's more data points to suggest it, but I still think that the Oshinoko episode was cut across, like... I, I think that it's on a different league, right? Roche Dead episode, it doesn't mean it's bad, it's just that it was not supposed to be that kind of episode. It was a setup episode, it was explaining shit, and there were some engaging moments going on, but I don't think that it's as good at Oshinoko. I think that this tier list is pretty fair. In fact, I should probably place like shit like this... I, I don't know, maybe, maybe this should go here, with along like this. I, I don't know. Maybe it should be like this. But I'm, I don't think it was really mid. I still did enjoy it. It was good. Right? Maybe something like that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe something like that. I think this is a pretty reasonable tier list. Right? Of all the shows that we're watching right now. And Tensura, there was a, a hiatus. So that's why Tensura is not on the list right now. Tensura had a recap episode. You know, Osan Newbie Adventure also was on hiatus. And I think that this is comfortably my last week's most recent episodes of the tier list where the cutoff is at Sunday, right? The last enemy that gets made it in is Sunday and Oshinoko was cut across, you know, cut above the rest. Uh, I think that these episodes were fantastic. It just didn't really have the same caliber or polish as Oshinoko and then the rest of it is just enjoyable. Enjoyable, man.